listening to the Narrative Podcast with Halsey Allen. The Narrative Podcast is changing the narrative one episode at a time. Peace, 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 family. You're now listening to the Narrative Podcast. Welcome to another edition of the Narrative Podcast. And I am your host, Halsey Allen. Welcome all my narrators. The Narrative Podcast is the home of original people. Original people peace. Original people reciprocity and original people positivity. The Narrative Podcast promotes positive reinforcement of original people and original people culture. The Narrative Podcast provides positive frames of reference about original people and original people culture. So how's everybody doing? Are they making their preparation for Labor Day? It is officially Labor Day weekend. Labor Day is on Monday. The uh, nationally recognized holiday is on Monday. September 2nd. So, September 2nd is the uh, nationally recognized holiday, but um, technically it is a uh, Labor Day weekend from now till Monday. So, it was mad barbecues today, uh, celebrations in the park or wherever. Today is Friday. So, you know, all over the nation, uh, some type of Labor Day celebration or festivity was popping off today. Um, there'd be, uh, probably, it probably started on Friday, definitely today. And then most likely, um, Sunday as well, he was going to be grilling and chilling. But for those that don't know, a quick little history lesson. Um, Labor Day traditionally has, um, you know, ties to, you know, uh, slavery here in America. Uh, Originally, um, it was a day basically the um, slave masters gave the, uh, you know, slaves a day off where they didn't have to work, you know, at all, and they would have their own celebrations, you know, in the uh, slave quarters, they would fix dinners and whatnot, and uh, grill out, and sing and dance and enjoy each other's company and all that, so that's kind of, you know, like most of everything in America we originated it started with you know has roots in um, slavery so it's not necessarily a good thing I mean the psychology behind it you know where we're celebrating having a job essentially like we're all people that work nine to five jobs are slave um labor <laughs> to a, a certain capacity it's just minus the uh, whipping you know but um, anyway that was just a little brief moment in time a brief little factoid about the holiday that we're celebrating and like I say all the time on my platform uh, the narrative podcast you know is the home of original people so you know, as original people, we have to be mindful of the things that we celebrate. You know, we need to know about the origins of the things that we're celebrating. What are we, what are we giving and speaking life into? You know, what was the significance of it? What was it, it its past? You know, it's certain songs in American culture that are harmful to our people. You just wouldn't believe like the uh, 
the original lyrics to the ice cream song. A little ice cream truck that goes to dun, 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 dun. like Google the um, original lyrics to that. Just little stuff like that. We have to be careful, you know, repeating things and saying things and engaging in um, rituals. Labor Day is a ritual. But anyway, welcome to the Narrative Podcast. Got a pretty good uh, show show for you this evening. Um, now, for my narrator, for uh, my narrators, they already know the demonstration. They already know about uh, my platform and content, and um, you know my mission statement and uh, what I'm trying to achieve in this space that I'm in. But for those who are unaware of me and my platform, how I typically start things off is with a brief overview of the narrative podcast. So I do that before diving into the content, but before I do that, I plug whatever I got going on on my projects, and then I do a a brief overview of the narrative podcast. And then also dive right on into the content. So it sounds like a lot to unpack, but it's really not after I get going. Um, So I'm going to go uh, right ahead on and dive into it. But before that, uh, we definitely got to start things off with uh, a moment of silence. Uh, so yesterday, <clears throat> we la- lost um, a hip hop legend, uh, Fat Man Scoop. Uh, he collapsed on stage, you know, during a, a show he was doing, and um, there was not too much about the uh, cause of, you know, his demise. What was that place? Uh, what we do know. It is factual that he has been uh, struggling, you know, with his weight um, pretty much, you know, all his career. So he's been having, you know, health-related complications due, you know, to his, you know, health, personal health. But um, the press hasn't released any official cause of death. But... um, it's unfortunate that it uh, took place in front of all of us. So, uh, for those that didn't know who he was, he was a hip hop producer, a DJ, um, public figure, icon. Uh, he worked with a um, pretty much every single person in hip hop. He's also, you know, done. Uh, used to have be a, a regular on MTV. MTV2, you know, he's done a whole lot of stuff, hip-hop related, um, BET, he's like, you know, he just basically one of them people that made themselves be something. So when, you know, these rappers talk about starting from the bottom, Fat Man Scoop really did start from the bottom. He's like everything, he's the poster boy of everything, the shit in the work. Like, you know, what hip-hop is, it's like he wasn't that cooker, cookie-cutter cut, mode. He's just like, you know, to me, he's kind of reminiscent of, like, Biggie Smalls. Like, you know, it shouldn't have worked. Because, you know, at the time when Biggie came in for the MCs, you know, they had, like, pretty much guys was in shape. You had Tretch from Naughty by Nature. You had, uh, of course, LL, Tretch from Naughty by Nature. And, like, everybody in his, you know, class of emceeing that was getting physically fit for, um, you know, Busta at that time. Uh, people with, like, all the MCs was working out. But Biggie, you know, he was not in shape but yet 
he worked. You know what I mean? So, so that's what I'm saying about Fat Man Scoop. Like, far as DJing and uh, producing, like he, you know, he didn't fit, fit the uh, cookie cutter image of what success should look like. But he found a way to um, maneuver his brand and make it work. <clears throat> so he's definitely like inspiration for you, you know, everybody in the industry and everybody aspiring to be in the industry. So, you know. But um, anyway, we want to give that brother a moment of silence. And then also, you know, extend love, light, and healing to. Uh, Herb Gotti, who just recently had a stroke. So I guess the underlining message is in hip hop, you know, when you, like a lot of the veteran um, MCs and and uh, DJs and producers, they're getting up there. I would say this is a, a an eye opener to take better care of your health. Because health is wealth, <clears throat> you know. You can get all the plaques and the um, accolades and all that, but if you can't come back to your family in the same condition that you left the house, if you can't, you know, care for yourself when you start getting up there in your uh, mid and late 50s, you know, what's it all for? So... You know, not trying to preach at you. Just saying. Uh, we're going to give that brother uh, a moment of silence before um, plugging my promos. And then uh, after that, we're going to um, dive in, on into the content. Yeah, so um, rest well, rest well to a uh, fat man scoop. Uh, you know, condolences to his uh, friends, family, associates, everybody that worked with him, everybody that knew him on a uh, personal level, and and is affected by his you know passing. Condolences, you know, deepest condolences. All right, so let's get into it. <clears throat> the first thing I uh, need to plug, obviously, is uh, the support of the platform, the Narrative Podcast. So, first and foremost, I broadcast during the week, and obviously the weekend. This is the weekend. I have two different format styles. During the weekdays, I have two sections and during the weekend I have five sections so that's why I refer to my weekend episodes of the narrative podcast as a full episode so during the weekday that's just something that um, ties you over until the weekend but uh, you know the way you can support the uh, platform is to download this episode in all previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast. And then also follow me on YouTube and uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. And the reason why you want to do that is because um, this platform that I'm recording on broadcasts automatically to YouTube and X. Like right after I'm done recording, it automatically uploads to YouTube and X, so follow me on YouTube. I'm Halsey Allen. Follow my uh, viewer page, which is Halsey Allen. And then um, I don't have a, a designated uh, page just for uh, the narrative podcast content. But you want to follow me on uh, YouTube, my viewer page, Halsey Allen. And then go click um, on my... Uh, my videos and you'll see every single episode of the narrative podcast uploaded in chronological order so you follow me either on youtube 
or X and you will be notified about the newest episodes of the Narrative Podcast. So again on YouTube I'm Harzy Allen and um, click the uh, subscribe button to my YouTube channel then uh, hit that thumbs up button to like you know the episode of the Narrative Podcast and then share it across you know all platforms whatever platform that you'd like to share things on share the narrative podcast from youtube to all platforms and then um for x you got a little bit you got some more options so x um you want to go to my page over on x which is harsey allen i stay good at harsey allen and when you see the, uh, the link to the narrative podcast, click on that, and then it should open up, and you should see um, a lot more options. You should see the narrative podcast logo, the episode, the logo, which is a microphone, and says the narrative podcast. And then underneath that, you will see the down download button. It's an arrow pointing downward. I need you to click on that. Is that you know that e equals like you know CPMs and all that, and then next to that, there's a, a like button in the shape of a heart. You want to click on that for me, please. And then next to that is a comment box. So write something in the. Um, comment box you know whatever you feel about the episode positive or negative give me some type of feedback in the comment box and then also um, of course share it to all platforms so you got all those options to do to support the uh, platform download it comment um, like it and then share it of course but out of all of them, the most important one is the downloading. So, you you know, always, always, always download all episodes of the Narrative Podcast. Um, and make sure it's, you know, the right Narrative Podcast. Because there are thousands of podcasts titled the Narrative Podcast. Make sure you're downloading the ones hosted by me, Halsey Allen, H-A-L-L-Z-I-E, Allen, A-L-L-E-N. And yeah, that's how you support the platform. So the next thing I would like to uh, promote is my personal book of poetry. It's titled The Black Card. Um, it's basically a comprehensive, um, insightful look into our uh, culture is a uh, look at us as a people as a whole just everything that encompasses us, encompasses us and embodies us as a people um, and everything that we're currently going through and have gone through as a people so you know it's really insightful really witty really creative if you're an original man or an original woman you will automatically uh, connect with that uh, book. You know, it just, you know, the energy surrounding each piece will just be calling out to you. Um, basically, you know, it's your uh, connection to the ancestors is just like everything we go through as a people, like literally. Um, pretty much everything we experience as a people is in those 30 poems. Those 30 poems capture our essence. So to uh, sum it up, the, the uh, black card is basically like a day in the life of slash how to slash um, survival guide slash um, journal so you know go check it out it's a really good read it's available on poetizer.com so to purchase the black card head on over to 
Empoetizer.com. Empoetizer.com has a virtual online bookstore. So go to Poetizer.com's virtual online bookstore and look for my title, The Black Card, written by me, Halsey Allen, and purchase it. Um, the Black Card will make a good coffee table read, travel book, you know, um, a good book to pass the time with if you're just super bored, um, you know. It's just a good book in general. So, um, people outside of our culture, they can uh, still get something out of that uh, literature. Uh, so, if you're outside of our culture, but you consider yourself open minded and uh, progressive and like learning about uh, new cultures and um, new, having new experiences. That's definitely the book for you. You know, it'll um, broaden your horizons and um, give you a, a interesting insight and take on, you know, black culture. So go check that out. And the name of the book again is called The Black Card on Poetizer.com. And if you're unfamiliar with Poetizer, um, Poetizer is just basically a social uh, media platform for writers, um, just for anybody who likes to write, uh, hang out. You know, Poetizer is the place for you, um, and they cater to all genres of writing. Uh, you know, short story, essay writing, novel writing, and then of course poetry. It's in the name. Um, they have different little rooms for each uh, writing style, a writing prompt for each writing style. So, like, people that write short stories, you know, they got a room with, like, with a writing prompt. Today, short, uh, write a, a story, a short story about uh, a dog. And then um, novel writing. They give you some prompts and be like, use these. You know, this is your main character, and they set up this scenario and, um, you know, something like somebody that likes to write novels so, would be interesting to them. And then um, on the poetry side, they would have a room where they tell you to, uh, you know, write a poem about roses. Like, Stuff like that, so really good fun. Um, they can, uh, you can also social, uh, socially interact with other people on that site. So you know, but um, the most important thing is they have a self-publishing option for people that like to write to uh, turn their book into a um, or, or turn their uh, work that they uh, share on that platform into a book and that's what I did um, and it's really uh, it's really economic it's really budget friendly it rivals uh, Kindle and Amazon and all those other self publishing sites um, they offer the exact same services but for a fraction of the cost and when I mean fraction of the cost I mean fraction of the cost you can write um, two, three hundred uh, page book for less than a thousand bucks on uh, Poetizer. <coughs> but um, anyway, that's it and that's all. Go uh, check out my book on Poetizer.com, The Black Card or Get Your Black Card Revoked. And my last thing that I want to post a uh, uh, plug is my uh, personal poetry blog on blogger.com. It's called Hawes's Poetry Corner. And the address to that is www.mrhawsesblogs.com. And what that is, it's uh, just basically a collection of uh, my personal poems that I write and uh, post on that site. Um, 
A couple of unique things about the poems featured on Hawes' Poetry Corner is number one, that they're all spontaneously written in the moment. Um, I didn't contemplate on the subject matter for each piece. I didn't contemplate what I was going to title each piece. I just literally, legit, just, um, you know, it's just like the first thing that pops into my mind. I post on that uh, poetry site. Um, and it's really um, unique because the poems are so detailed and specific and intentional. Upon reading them, you would just think, you know, I'm just really just sitting here like editing and, and pre-writing and doing all the steps of writing, but I'm not. I'm just like legit off the cuff, first thing that pops into my head, right on the site. Um, but like I said, um, all, all the poetry posted on the that uh, blog site is completely uh, relatable, and it's they're completely uh, diverse. They appeal to many different audiences. So no matter what you know background you hail from, you're guaranteed to find a po poem that you can resonate with on that site, either a portion of it or the entire piece itself. <clears throat> now I do have like close to a dozen poems specifically for our community, things that has happened in our community and things that we deal with as a people. But other than that, you know, all the poems on um, my poetry blog are just 110% relatable and, you know, you will enjoy it. Um, so the way you can support Hawes' Poetry Corner is go to Hawes' Poetry Corner at www.mrhawesblogs.com and share either the link to Hawes' Poetry Corner, which is www.mrhawesblogs.com, or a poem featured on Hawes' Poetry Corner across all platforms, and then as well as, um, you know, uh, liking all my poetry. When you get to the site, you'll see a like button in the shape of a heart. You'll want to click on that for me, please. And then also each... Um, poem featured on the uh, site, you'll notice underneath it, there's a uh, comment box on it. You can uh, leave me a comment on each poem featured on the Hodges Poetry Corner. And then, of course, like I already said, share it across all platforms. Um, I would just say that people with the visual platforms, like TikTok and um, YouTube and Instagram Live, how y'all, you guys can support Hawes' Poetry Corner is to basically, you know, do a shout out, be like Hawes' Poetry Corner, or, you know, name a title on there, a pe like, you know, a piece that you like, a poem that you like, oh, go check this poem out, and go check that poem out, you know the deal. Same deal, you know, with the uh, narrative podcast. So for the uh, people that have visual platforms, you know, a shout out. <clears throat> but anyway, that's it and that's all. That's all the projects I have going on. I will keep you informed and notified about, you know, future upcoming projects. But those are pretty much my mainstays, my constants that I constantly need, you know, you all support. And um, now I'm going to uh, walk you through um, everything you need to know about the Narrative Podcast. So let's start at the top, Tippy, the name. The name of my podcast, the Narrative Podcast, says I don't like the false narrative that the media weaves about original people and original people culture. So what I want to do to counter um, the inaccurate and negative way that the media depicts our images and our likenesses 
is to create a platform where I'm providing positive frames of reference about our people and our culture and encouraging you know positive reinforcement of our people and our culture and basically to uplift and edify our people and our culture and um, create a safe space for us so you know and essentially um, change the narrative about how our people are perceived and portrayed in across all you know forms of media hence the title the narrative podcast and I think that's also a perfect segue to my tagline the narrative podcast changing the narrative one episode at a time by destroying negative stereotypes about original people and original people culture how do I destroy the negative stereotypes about our people and our culture by providing positive frames of reference about our people and our culture so essentially that is my mission statement to provide positive frames of reference about our people and our culture also to bring awareness to the listening audience of why it's important to um, responsibly utilize your platforms when um, sharing content about our people and our culture and then also to encourage you know my listening audience to upload and share positive content about our people and our culture so you know that's the mission statement of the narrative podcast um, the first thing you need to be aware of is I refer to my uh, target listening audience as my narrators and what I mean by that is basically to acknowledge that the, the times that we're living in we're living in the uh, digital information age and we gather collect share socialize we pretty much do everything digitally collect information interact with one another um, you name it it's done online these days and not only that um, all pretty much uh, digital spaces have a bio section and in the bio section people pretty much you know they list everything that they want people that view their page you know they list you know things that they want people to know about themselves you know their hobbies their interests their beliefs their values uh, what their turn ons their turn offs and then they um upload content that is reflective of what they put in their bio section so like for say for example if I'm into uh, airplanes you know if I say if I list in my uh, bio section I'm in the airplanes I'm gonna upload content that's you know supports that I'm into uh, I'm going to upload visual content that supports my uh, love of airplanes I'm going to you know upload visual content of like different types of airplanes uh, me riding in you know different types of airplanes uh, you know me on the ground looking up at the sky doing you know taking pictures of airplanes from the ground you know up and just basically said all that to say I'm going to you know upload visual content that's reflective of whatever I posted in my uh, bio section and then typically when people occupy a digital space you know whatever the space is whether it's Facebook whether it's Twitter whether it's um, uh, TikTok 
whether it's YouTube, whether it's whatever, you know, whatever the uh, platform is, is guaranteed to be positive. They're going to put out the best possible version of whatever they say they're into in their uh, bio section. They're going to give you the best possible visual representation of whatever, you know, the text in their bio section suggests. And that's why I call my target listening audience my narrators. Because when you're sharing information online, when you're sharing your bio sections and your um, visual content online, what you're doing is you're telling or narrating your own personal story. You see, you're telling the story of you online. That's the, you know, that's the uh, digital age that we're living in. Everybody tells their own story you know, based on, you know, their content. Whatever their platform is, whether it's YouTube, X, um, Pinterest, whatever. They're giving you a visual representation of themselves. And it's usually a good one. You know, nobody intentionally gets online and gives a negative overall look of themselves like nobody puts out the worst possible version of themselves online not intentionally like sometimes you know people might not be checking out the background <laughs> before they upload the content shout out the dirty model mirrors dirty mirror models on IG <laughs> And on, on social media uh, networks, <clears throat> you know, we all done seen that one chick. Swear she's styling. Got the de got that streaky mirror. It looked like she just backwashed all over the mirror. But um, anyway, said all that to say um. We need to um, put out the best possible versions of ourselves <clears throat> on whatever uh, platform that we occupy. We need to tell or narrate our own stories. Because if history hasn't taught us anything, it's taught us this. If you don't tell your own story, your own story will be told for you. And the current sto story that's being told about our people is a very negative one. So it's up to each and every one of us to tell or narrate our own stories. And that's why I call my target listening audience my narrators. <clears throat> um, which brings me to my next uh, point. The narrative podcast is a, a safe space, it's a positive space. I don't engage in negativity, gossip, slander. Um, negative isms, put downs, uh, roasting. I don't try to use my platform to scold people, um, judge people, put people down. This, this is a safe space for original people um, dedicated towards, you know, uplifting and edifying our people and providing, you know, our people with positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. That's what I do on this platform. Um, I do, however, uh, deliver commentary, and when I'm delivering my commentary about, you know, whatever is happening on in the world, uh, especially within our community, I may bring up a famous, famous person's name, and if I ever bring up a famous person's name, it's not to ever to, you know put them down or make them feel bad or some type of way. Um, it's really just to to um, 
to illustrate a point I'm trying to make in the uh, point that I always pin it back to my overall takeaway point that I make about negative things that happen on it that goes on within our community are just um, in the scope of our people have been systematically oppressed and we've also been um, you know systemically or psychologically programmed and conditioned by the powers that shouldn't be it's like they use the media and all forms of media to program and condition our minds into you know speaking negatively acting in a negative uh, manner viewing each other negatively so said all that to say usually usually almost 90 percent of the time anything that is hap uh, negative that's happening in our community is a direct result of systemic programming or uh, <clears throat> systemic oppression and psychological programming and conditioning guarantee you guarantee you it plays some type of role in it whatever the famous person is going through whatever the regular person is going through you know because you know like on the lo no local news that's the part you don't see they just they just show you the brother or the sister in handcuffs after they done apprehended him but they don't tell you know don't show or tell like how did we get here what happened what led up to this event <clears throat> Now I do understand and respect accountability. I believe, you know, full grown adults should be accountable for their actions. Um, as a people, you know, it would be very, uh, reprehensible to, you know, blame your circumstances for things outside of you you know blaming your you know parents and whatever you know you have to take a degree of accountability for your own actions but yet in that same breath it'd be folly not to acknowledge Systemic, pro, systemic um, oppression and psychological programming and conditioning. You can't not act like that's not a factor when things don't go right. It's a huge factor. But, um, yeah. So that's essentially... You know what the narrative podcast is it's a safe space for our people and our culture um next thing you need to be aware about the narrative podcast it's a time sensitive platform i try not to exceed one hour per broadcast and the purpose of me doing that is basically to keep the listening audience attentive and um keep you entertained and um uh it aids in uh making the content digestible it helps uh, me not to deviate too far away from a subject and um, go on a, a rant or a tangent. And then it also um, helps me to uh, keep my content cohesive and my uh, subject matter digestible. And then also... Um, makes it more appealing to a broader audience you know if I'm just nailing all my speaking points and um, not boring you guys to sleep 
you know, that's the quickest way to, you know, lose your audience is to just bore them to sleep. Now, I'm not saying I'm not a, a prolific speaker. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not some degree of interesting. Um, but even the most gifted storyteller, you know, can be boring at times. Um, there are some... There's an exception to every rule. There are some people out there that they're just, the life they let it live is so interesting and their experience they've experienced, you know, their life experience is so interesting. You want people like that to talk and talk and talk and you can't get enough of, you know, their stories and stuff. But I'm not that, you know. I get tired after 20 minutes in, I ain't going to lie to you, when I see 20 minutes I'm kind of lethargic. <clears throat> so I try to keep this thing just um, brief to the point and um, I try to keep it as fresh and innovative and exciting and entertaining way as possible to you know, keep the attention of the listening audience. So that's why I um, try not to exceed one hour per broadcast. And then last but not least, I refer to our people as original people. And the purpose of me referring to our people as original people is really just to, you know, um, acknowledge um, our existence on the um historical standpoint and then also to unify us as a people and so what I what do I mean by acknowledge our existence on the um, historical side of it well we were and are the original beings of this planet we was here thousands of years before anybody else existed anywhere else you know, before anything was, we was. The original man and the original woman of this planet. Um, everything came from us. Like, we birthed civilization. Uh, we created, pretty much. We created or originated everything. We originated religion. We originated spirituality. We originated mathematics. We originated science. We originated chemistry, biology. We were the original builders. We were the original architects. We were the original scholars. We were the original educators. not too much things that we haven't originally done or originally created. Everything begins with us. And so that's what I mean when I call my, you know, target listening audience original. Original people. And then a sub point that I want to uh, tack on to the whole original thing is, you know, being original people, um, there's a false narrative, you know, circulating about our people. Um, it's not really a um, super false narrative. It's just like a whole lot of untrue misnomers and um, you know a deflective diversionary tactic really uh, so it seems like historians have tried to decide for our people to make slavery the most um, impactful time 
of our existence. They want to um, basically stitch slavery to our people. When you talk about our people, like, oh yeah, they was enslaved. They was African slaves. <clears throat> or they were slaves over in, you know, Brazil and Cuba and all them other places. And, but um, point being, just as I said, we were and are the original beings of this planet. We was here first. Which I think we was just all huddled in one spot. We didn't leave from that one spot and go other places. We left from that one spot and went other places long before some evil, deviant, filthy beast came up with the idea of slavery and decided to start enslaving people. Who was already free in the world? Who was already on our own? on every single continent in the world. Seven of them, right? It was already, there was already a large concentration of our people in all, in all seven continents. Like, and we didn't get to all them places on slave boats. We didn't. But yet, they want to keep on perpetuating and steering us into the direction of slavery. They want to keep on and just keep that, that trauma and that fear fresh. They want to bombard us with that imagery. You see, because slavery is like a billion dollars to this day. Even though it's, air quotes, abolished, they're still you know, billions of dollars being made off the slave trade, keeping that ideal of slavery alive. All these museums, all these um, tourist attractions, saying the slaves did this and the slaves did that, and they got over here like this, and, you know, meanwhile, the curators of a lot of these um, museums and um, famous tourist attractions are people that do not look like this. So they just basically make an ish up about slavery and we don't as a people challenge it because, like, the people that is leading the tours, they're just like regular people off the street doing what the curators of the museum tell them to say. Or, you know, if it's a, like a guided tour of a, a tourist attraction, you know, whatever the person hired them to say, whatever, you know, they're reading off a script. They don't know. They didn't go to school. They didn't study it. They don't know. They're, you know what I mean? They're just regurgitating information about it. And the information they're regurgitating is unfactual and, you know, intentional. They're intentionally trying to, you know, instill fear and, um, promote the image of this docile, frightened person that never attempted to try to run away, get their uh, freedom, you know, that's the images they want to bombard us with, to be fearful of the oppressor, never uh, speak against the system, never try to um, rebel. That's why they keep on pushing slavery so much. If you look in Hollywood, and just you can do the Google search, like how many millions of dollars 
have movies about slavery taken in? How many movies about slavery have been produced compared to, you know, everybody else's traumatic time period? You know, they had slavery over in Europe for Europeans, but have we ever seen a European slave movie? Do you know how bad they used to do the Europeans in the early colonial times? But we've never seen that, have we? We've only seen movies from that time period where they're like really refined and, and um, sophisticated and they're talking like this and you know wearing the little puffy pants with the puffy shoulder pads but yet you know when you look at slavery it's like you know we were as filthy and you know, we were frightened and, you know, that's all I'm saying is just, it's a false narrative that they keep on trying to perpetuate to keep our people frightened and to keep our people complicit in this system of government that they have laid out for our people. So that we'll never try to rise up and reclaim what is ours or, you know, think for ourselves or do anything for ourselves. That's why they keep on pushing this whole slave narrative. So not saying slavery wasn't real, not saying slavery didn't happen. I'm just saying all of us didn't get to all these places on slave boats, especially here in the Americas. And then I'm most definitely saying, you know, we rebelled all during uh, slave, slave times. There wasn't one moment in history and one corner of the globe where our people was enslaved that we didn't lead a rebellion that they, we didn't rise up against the uh, people that enslaved us not one but it's not really highly publicized when we talk about slavery they would just have us leading us to believe there was only one Nat Turner. There was only one Harriet Tubman. When where there was thousands of Nat Turners, there was thousands of Harriet Tubmans. There was thousands of, you know, Sojourner Troops. Like, and the list goes on. All those um, radical people that played a, a part. You know. In uh, resisting the slave uh, demonstration. But uh, anyway, on to my next point. Um, I also refer to our people as original people, as an uh, eff effort to unify us as a people. Because there's many different types of us, hailing from different land masses, believing in different things, and um, speaking different languages, and, you know, just different. We have all these differences within our community. But out of all those differences, we also have a whole lot of similarities, too. And a few of them being one... We are all original people who was all, all here first. Um, we can all trace our lineage back to the original point of origin for all civilization. And then we can all 
come together um, instinctively. We all have a, a unspoken bond. We can all connect to each other on a, a you know, on an almost empathic level. It's like I don't know you from a hole in the ground, but I know what you're going through. I know the opposition you face. You know, my opposition is not like yours, but we're, we have the same opposition. We have the same, the same forces that set against you is set against me. So we have that in common. But um, outside of that, you know, we're all one people. And the crazy thing is the, the people outside of our culture, they're the ones that remind us that we are all one people. Because, you know, they don't refer to us as our nationalities. We do. So, like, a Caucasian person, they won't look at a black person and be like, oh, you're Haitian. They just be like, you're black. An Asian person won't look at a, a black person and be like, oh, you're from Trinity. They just be like, you're black. You know? A fair-skinned a fair skinned Spanish person won't say you're uh, Spanish. They say you're black. But only we cling to our nationalities and all these other things we refer to ourselves as. So I say, you know, take their, you know, take their mentality and just have one universal thing to describe us as. And when you say an original, that's so empowering. Because there's nothing better than the original. Nothing beats the original. Nothing. There's hardly anything better than the original. I mean, there's an exception to every rule. Like, you know, yeah. If we're talking automobiles, I don't think nobody wants to drive the uh, Model T. Versus a, a a Hellcat, but for the most part, the original is the best, the first, like the most, you know. And then not saying we're better than anybody. I'm just saying we was definitely here first, and you know, we originated everything. So referring to our people as original people, that's just so, you know, impactful, more dynamic, more uplifting, and more accurate, because we're not black. Like, black is black. A black t-shirt's black. We got some extremely dark-skinned people, but we don't have no black people within our community. Not African American. We're not Negroes. Now, genetically, we have the Negroid gene. We're definitely not N words, hard R. But, um, anyway, said all that to say original people. You know, that's a good way to unify us as a people, and I think you're now up to speed with everything you need to know about the Narrative Podcast. Um, and if you're still in the gray, I'm over 300 episodes in, so to remember to download this episode and all previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast, wherever you get your podcast information from. And now for my very first section of 
the narrative podcast weekend edition uh the first section of the narrative podcast is titled the highlight section and what the highlight section is about is basically basically i'm highlighting black owned businesses or on my platform uh, original people owned and operated businesses um, and the reason why I do that is because I'm giving positive frames of reference that's what the narrative podcast is all about me providing positive frames of reference about our people and our culture and the positive frame of reference that I give about our people and our culture on the weekends are positive frames of reference about ownership and the reason why I feel the need to provide positive frames of uh, reference on ownership is because we're not afforded a lot of frames of reference about us owning anything the very few frames of reference that we have about ownership come to us via scripted reality television and on these scripted reality television shows these producers they warp and they skew the imagery of our brothers and sisters who are owners of their brand And being owners of their brand mean that many means they have several, you know, business entities under their umbrella. They take care of a lot of families, they take care of their communities that they're from, wherever they grew up at, wherever they originated from. They have now made their way in Hollywood, they're earning, you know, upward to five or six figures you know a month maybe maybe a year maybe a month I don't know depending on the caliber of the celebrity that they have on there but all that gets canceled out by the uh, producers ambition and their ambition is to get the ratings and what gets ratings Degeneracy, violence. So the producer wants the uh, ratings. They're going to uh, focus the lens on our people engaging in things that are really outside of their true nature. The producers are going to catch them in ultra rare form to get the ratings. They're going to catch them on camera indulging in, you know, illegal substances. They're going to catch them on camera being um, intoxicated. they are going to catch them on camera fornicating, fighting, you name it. That's their job. That's what they want to you know, show the world how we act. This is them. This is this group of people. Look at them. Look at them act like this. And then meanwhile, we're not, we're missing that these people on these scripted reality television shows are, you know, millionaires close to being billionaires. And they give back to their community and they hire their own and pro provide and afford opportunities, but we don't all we're, we're focused on is the violence. All we're focused on is the degeneracy. That's what they want us to see. You see? But um, anyway, that's why I designed the uh, narrative podcast, the highlight section on the narrative podcast, is to just really walk you through a business owner's journey uh, their track to becoming a business owner you know where they grew up how they came up with the idea why they came up with the idea 
um, you know, just specific detailed information about the business owner. Now, that's the purpose of the highlight section. I'm highlighting black owned businesses. And then, um, disclaimer, so, uh, and my criteria I use to select the businesses that I, uh, highlight in the highlight section fall under these categories. Uh, number one, they're original owned and operated, meaning they're black owned and black operated from the top to the bottom. Um, they hire their own. They train their own. Uh, you know, they're doing for self is what I'm saying. And then many of these businesses that I highlight, they're family-owned operations. So in that instance, I would be giving the listening audience a positive frame of reference about generational wealth. And then um, another qualifying factor is, you know, they all do some type of charity work. They either have their own nonprofit organization or they pay into a nonprofit organization. They do something, 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 some type of uh, activism. Some t they advocate for something. They, you know, do something community related. They help out in that way. And then last but not least, my last qualifying factor is that the businesses that I highlight in the highlight section um, complement or uh, coincide with my theme. And my theme today are my... Uh, never ending things. My themes used to be the seasons, you know, summer, winter, fall, spring, but I noticed I was uh, becoming redundant. I was doing a lot of, uh, you know, businesses that I covered in the past over again. So I decided to um, now do um, nationally recognized days it's always going to be a new one every single year so the, I'll be less likely to repeat a business that I did in the past but um so yeah so now that you know what the uh, highlight section of the narrative podcast is all about I'm going to dive right in with the uh, first business so like I said you know, all the businesses uh, coincide with the national, nationally recognized uh, day. You know, day of the month, and today is August 31st. So today, in commemoration with the nationally recognized day, which is, so today is national cosplay day so the businesses that I will be highlighting coincide with today's nationally um, recognized day so in commemoration with national cosplay day I'll be highlighting A business called Amalgun. Uh, Amalgun Comics and Coffee House. It was established in 2015 by a sister by the name of Ariel Johnson. Um, I couldn't find too much information on the sister. Um, I'd read a few uh, articles, but basically, 
It didn't really say, um, you know, where she grew up. Uh, what I did find is um, she's basically a former Temple grad, a, a Temple University grad um, in Philly. She's from Philly, and her uh, the first location of her um, coffee house is in Philly. I think she uh, now has another one in New York, and she's planning to go, uh, you know, nationwide with it. But she had humble beginnings. She just basically she was always um, into comic book and that type of world. Cosplay, obviously, goes to the cons and such, and you know was inspired to um, create a safe space for people that like that type of lifestyle because they're ostracized and made fun of, of course. Like I'm not gonna lie, like. In my day, I'm a Gen Xer, we used to beat people up like that. We used to bully people like that. It was into the dungeons and the dragons and all that. Like, I think as deep as we ever did in the 80s was like, uh, you know, the weekday anime, like G.I. Joe and... Uh, Thundercats, you know, stuff like that, and that was just really from like, it was a cutoff, and I think like, yeah, I don't think they went all the way up to high school admitting openly that they liked that stuff. <clears throat> But, um, first of all, just let me put y'all up on game. Don't you ever call them comics. They are graphic novels. Thank you very much. It's literature. So get it straight. That's what she, uh, her business is. She's selling graphic novels, not comics. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, like I said, there wasn't too much more on our bio other than um, what uh, university she attended. Um, it just really says she was into uh, comics growing up. When I, I, when I try to do these things, I try to give you a full experience. You know, I, I try to tell you, like, what state they grew up in and, um, you know, what was their first experience, like what planted the seed for them to start the business, what set them on that path, you know, just everything along their journey. But sometimes the information is just not available and that the type of information that I usually provide on these things just wasn't available this week. So, like I said, the article just basically, you know, says her former alma mater and the name of the business, uh, which is currently down, her website. So, you would just, if you're a Philly native, you had to physically go. Uh, the uh, website is down right now, which is... Uh, Morgan Philly dot com. So it's um, it needs it's like being serviced. I don't know when uh, she's gonna have it back up and running. But the physical address is one two one five four two seven three zero zero. Or is that the telephone number? My bad. I would have read you on the telephone number. Um. The address, the physical address is 2578 Frankfurt Avenue, Philly, Pennsylvania, 19125, and the uh, 
site address is Amalgam Philly.com and then the telephone number is 121-542-7300 and the sister's name is the proprietor founder of this business is a one Mrs. Ariel Johnson and her mission statement is just basically to make that world all inclusive for all people walks of life, especially our people, original people. She employs her own, um, she caters to that community. Um, you know, I think the, uh, the word for it is blurred community, black nerd. So that's who she caters to, but she also caters to the Spanish uh, community and to the letter community. Uh, the community can't really say without getting sued. Starts with an L, ends in Q. But, um, you know, that's who she caters to for her uh, comic book shop. Now, she also serves coffee and snacks as well. Uh, so, you know, she got all types of uh, coffee related beverages like, you know, lattes and uh, cappuccinos, regular coffee, blended coffee, juices, cold pressed juices, um, the food, of course, like coffee, you know, if you ever been to a coffee house, cookies, scones, um, bars, and then uh, like just finger food type stuff, wraps, sandwiches, Probably like um, chips and whatnot. But um, if you're ever in Philly, go check that out. Uh, amalgam. So I'm assuming it's like short for am for amalgamate, like to create. But um, go check it out. Uh, let join me into uh, giving our sister Ariel Johnson a warm narrative podcast round of applause for her comic book shop slash coffee house Amalgam Comics and Coffee House. So next up, same deal, not a whole lot, um, this place is called D3 Comic Spot, and it was established in 2013 by a brother by the name of Darren Macon, M-A-C-O-N, um, his spot now his website is functional, it's d3comicspot.com. He also has a, a YouTube channel, just uh, the D3 Comic Spot. Um, and if you have direct questions about, you know, what types of uh, comic books he has in store or just something, you know, if you want a, a specific question you have to have to ask them, you can hit them up at a D3 Comics bookstore at Yahoo. And then also it's family owned and operated, so he runs it with his mother and his children. Uh, their mission statement is to uh, connect with the youth. Uh, and introduce them to literature and comic books our our literature their graphic novels they're telling the story like in essence a comic book is exaggerated um, real life many comic books like they might like do superhero type stuff and 
you know, powers and whatnot, but essentially, like, before they get to the plot, it's just like regular people, a day in the life of, you know. So it is a form of literature. Um, he became interested in comics. Uh, his uncle gave him a box of comics. The article didn't say what the comics were. But um, that's how he became interested in um, comics. Um, another unique thing about his shop is they also do like uh, trading cards and they have little uh, Funko figurines, you know, just like nerd type stuff. Um, you know, the trading card games, uh, comic books and um, you know, whatever is trendy to collect, they would have there. Uh, I'm guessing also, like, well, I went to the spot, like, probably, like, comic book movies and comic book television, comic book themed movies and television shows available for purchase. Um... They have forums, discussions, uh, and I believe they do have, like, their days when you can come in cosplay. But uh, the address is 37 Ridgeway, California, 94806, telephone number 510-223. 2179 <clears throat> and then last but not least I um, forgot to say they also work in conjunction with the local uh, school um, they give back they give free comics away to uh, Verde Elementary located in uh, Richmond California so they give back to the youth, they employ their own, it's family owned and operated, so they're providing a service for the community, so go support them. And these, uh, and the brother's name again is Darwin McCain, McCann, and his establishment is called D3 Comic Spot. So let's give it up for Darwin in the D3 Comic Spot. Right, moving right along, my next uh, section here on the Narrative Podcast is a spotlight section. And the spotlight section is just really, um, it's a section where I'm uh, spotlighting people from our community that are impacting our community in a positive way. We're giving back through philanthropy. Um, a form of or advocating for something or, you know, social justice, something positive. <clears throat> and the reason why I do, you know, the spotlight section is just basically to create the healthy habit of using positive, using your, uh, you know, social media spot or digital uh media presence uh, for positive reinforcement rather than to uh, tear down and um, try to destroy another brother or sister um, and again this is you know psychological programming and conditioning that's what that does you see, they've psychologically programmed and conditioned us to turn on one another. They've also psychologically programmed and programmed us into and conditioned us to believe that the only way you can make money online is to, you know, post negative content. 
It's like a billion dollars a year that these faceless corporations earn pocket from, you know, our people, original people, turning on one another, taking cheap shots, going back and forth on, you know, different uh, platforms. And then, you know, the YouTubers, they cover the dispute. You know, this person said that, and they did this, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, talk reckless, clap back, reckless comment, clap back, reckless comment, clap back. It's like a weird little game of, you know, social media tennis. They hit the ball one way, and the other person hit the ball the other way. But the, um, kicker is it might result to you know, a physical confrontation, or in some cases, unaliving. And we fall right into the little trap. And the reason why we fall, fall right into the little trap is because we've been psychologically programmed and conditioned, and then they also incentivize it with money. So, you know, those pages where they're talking reckless, they're monetized. So when you go, they go on each other's page to start their little feud, you know, they're getting money from it because it's monetized. So they're getting the clicks and the CPMs and all that to uh, get paid. So it's a vicious little circle. So that's why I want to create the spotlight section is just basically, you know, creating an environment where, you know, I'm congratulating brothers and sisters for, on all their accomplishments and achievements and, you know, applauding them for their noble efforts to uh, further and champion the cause. And, um, you know, create a safe space to... Uh, encourage positive reinforcement and not for nothing it has worked to a certain degree um, so in the past I've spotlighted I usually uh, I had originally just only um, spotlighted entertainers like you know actors actresses recording artists social media um figures public figures religious people recording artists comedians um so forth and etc but more these days i'm i'm really trying to focus on regular people because i don't want to uh reinforce the negative stereotype that all oh, we know how to do is entertained so I want to um, you know I'm trying my very best to spotlight you know regular people these days uh, so yeah but not for nothing I created the lane for spotlighting because before I created the spotlight section on my platform the narrative podcast nobody N n nobody was spotlighting anybody <clears throat> and now every time you hear somebody say you know today we'll be spotlighting this person and that person and you know or you know in rare cases it might be a product or a service today's spotlight is on the XJ model of the blah 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 whatever whatever but for the most part, when it's in reference of a person, you know, on a, a YouTube channel or a talk show or a podcast, you know, that buzz term didn't exist before I created it. So, yeah, I created the way for spotlighting because before I added spotlight, section of my podcast nobody 
n- n- nobody was spotlighting anybody. And you can go through my episode log uh, and do a cross-reference check if you got that free time. I guarantee you, you, you won't, you know, before I started my podcast, you wasn't really hearing that a lot. But um, anyway, it's just it, it's just something I need to point out because this internet makes the world small. I know I got a whole lot of you know really famous, influential people that listen to my content avidly, you know, quietly support my content. You know, it'll be more advantageous for me if they publicly openly support the platform but uh, you know at the end of the day I respect it and all you know all forms of support are good I'm not in it for the uh, for the um, validation I'm not in it for the money, because if I was, I would have quit on episode one. It's just not a lot of money in this, you know, podcast and stuff. I'm here for the people to put out some positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. And to encourage everybody else to do the same. Um, But anyway, the uh, internet makes the world small. So I know for a fact. You know, famous people, celebrities within our community are listening every single week to my content, regardless of the stats of what, you know, the views are saying and the hits are saying. I know who's listening, and they know I know (laughs) that they know I know. You know what I mean? So it's all good. I'm glad you like my content. I like yours too. And I know you're listening to me on a regular basis. You know how I know? Because you incorporate my content into your content. So you're not just listening to what I say. You're listening to how I say it. All my nuances, the way I say stuff, how I accentuate, you know, my speech pattern. That pops up in your content too. But, um, yeah. So, as I said, I create the way for spotlighting, and I'm so happy that so many people are doing it because we need to. You know, responsibly you utilize our um, platforms to, you know, lift each other up, not tear each other down. So if I created that lane to do that, that makes me feel good. Yeah. Yes, sir. You are now listening to the Narrative Podcast with Halsey Allen. The Narrative Podcast is changing the narrative one episode at a time. In a real way. So without any further ado, this week on the Spotlight section, I'll be acknowledging and awarding the Spotlight to, um, I've been trying to do, uh, you know, regular people, but uh, this brother is a social media um, content creator, and he goes by the name Big Cam I Am, and all his, uh, you know, videos, YouTube and TikTok, all of them are viral, you know, well over uh, 100,000 views. Uh, and the unique thing about him, why I like him and why I'm giving the spotlight to him is basically he's using 
his platform to highlight racial um, situations, like keeping the conversation going. He's doing it in an entertaining way. He's delivering the message without beating you upside the head with it. But um, his content is just, is just basically like, it's like a um, you can't make this stuff up type content. Like people, like white people, are always telling us to get over slavery. And then he he pulls up the visual content to let you know why we can't. Because people like this still exist here in the world. It's 24, and there's still people like you know this class and group of people walking around here with thinking like this, behaving like this acting like this, using their power and their resources to exclude our people. And he just really, um, you know, shines a light on that type of behavior and like his videos, his content is hilarious. He does it in like a comedic way, but serious enough to make you think critically. But then at at the same time, you know, give you a little dose of the best medicine in the world, which is laughter. Because you got to laugh at some of that stuff. But, you know, a really good content creator. I like his brand. I like his product. Um, he's entertaining without, you know, being coming across buffoonish. And it's like good intellectual type stuff far as the content there's some con content out there is like you can feel your IQ slipping like absorbing that lunacy in 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 idiocy <laughs> and they just do it like that to get get um views behaving like that just saying anything doing anything but that brother don't fall into that category. Um, he's really, uh, you know, changing the landscape of content creating with the uh, type of content, you know, he's putting out. And at the rate he's going, I can see him actually most likely having his own special, probably like on Netflix or... Uh, maybe um, his own streaming network if he keeps on going the rate he's going. But um, definitely go support that brother. Um, like I said, you know, his content is like top tier. Like he really um, hits the nail on the head. I, I get it immediately. All his videos and stuff he posts. Um, you know, do yourself a huge favor. Go follow that brother. His name is uh, Big Cam I Am. So that's who got the spotlight this week on the Near the Podcast Spotlight Edition. Now, on the Spotlight Edition is some similar to the Highlight um, Edition. I like to tell you, you know, where they was born and you know, where they went to school, education, how they came up with the idea, but sometimes the information is not available. As when I pulled his profile up, I was looking for his government name, couldn't find it. All I could really find is his TikTok, his TikTok account and all his content. But um, yeah, go check it out. Check that brother out. Go follow him on TikTok. Go follow him on YouTube. Uh, Big Cam I Am. Go follow him on X. And that's who got the spotlight of the day this week on the Narrative Podcast. Let's give it up for a big camp I am. Okay, and next section here on the narrative podcast is my health and wellness section 
And in this section, it's self-explanatory. I will be discussing health and wellness. I give health and wellness tips in the health and wellness section on the narrative podcast. And the reason why I feel the need to be um, giving health and wellness tips because my target listening audience, original people, we are a very sick people. We are not healthy at all, and the reason why we're not being healthy at all isn't entirely our fault. It's because we're being targeted. We're trying, we're, you know, we're being targeted to be eliminated. Um, We're being attacked. We're being attacked mentally, physically, spiritually. We're putting stuff in our, in our food in the air we breathe, in certain, uh, you know, products we use, soaps, lotions, you know, laundry detergent, uh, cleaning products for your home, certain fabrics contain ingredients and chemicals that are hazardous to our composition and genetic makeup and it's purposefully done then on the mental side of it um, like I said the media they've waged psychological warfare against our people with how they use um, the media to promote propaganda about our people and our culture. Spiritually, it is a spiritual war. We're being physically attacked (laughs) due to dark demonic entities taking possession over people to attack us. So that's what we're faced with, and that's what the health and wellness section is all about. I'm giving health and wellness tips to armor up in all the areas to help fortify, give give tips to help fortify us in all the areas that we're being attacked. So that's what the health and wellness section of the Narrative Podcast is all about. Um, We're also being attacked financially, but I don't, you know, I don't consider myself a financial guru. I just, um, I believe health is wealth. So, you know, there's that. Um, And then a quick disclaimer. um, (coughs) My content is for anybody to listen to from any you know, background, upbringing, race, religion, creed, gender, whatever. But I just want you to be aware of, you know, all the content that I share with on my platform. My demographic is original people. And, you know, you're more than free to listen to it and participate it. Uh, participate in it and apply anything that applies to you but just know all the content on this platform is geared towards original people but especially in this section especially in this section because I don't believe we're just all one kumbaya people you know We definitely are a human race, but variety is the spice of life. We're all different. We all have different dietetic needs. We all have different spiritual needs. We all have different emotional traumas, emotional triggers, and all those things that I just named are, you know, culturally different. It varies from culture to culture. 
So whereas, you know, one culture where the, where you eat a certain type of food that is strengthened and nourish that culture, if another culture, you know, partakes in that that specific regions, you know, diet, that would harm them. And then the thing, same thing goes spiritually and emotionally as well. So we're not all the same. We all need, we all require different things to sustain our lives. So I'm not, I never, I, I don't get why people try to describe, uh, subscribe to this, we are all one thing. We're not. And it's not wrong to acknowledge the differences. It's only hate-filled and wrong when you try to say, you know, your group is better than another group. Now, that's the hatred part of it. But to, to acknowledge the differences, that's just scientific. That's just an astute observation. We're different. So we need different things to survive. <clears throat> and I'm giving our people, original people, the things they need to survive in the way of health and wellness tips to sustain their lives and make their lives more enriching and fulfilling. That's all. I don't hate anybody. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I'm just, you know, I'm with my people, as every other group of people is with their people. So let's not do that. But um, health and wellness tip of the day is about the health benefits of an ancient grain called kamut. Kamut is in the uh, same family as burglar wheat and durum. So if you're familiar with durum, like pasta, some pastas are made of durum. And then there's also something called a couscous, that's durum. And then burglar wheat is like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a wheat berry that you boil. And it's kind of something like, um, it's kind of like something like oatmeal, I want to say, but not really. Because it's like, it's, it's, it's spherical, it's round, most, for the most part. Durham, or burglar wheat, my part, pardon. But, uh, Kamut. Um, you're probably, if you're a cereal eater, you'll probably be like those little wheat puffs, like, um, Like sugar smacks. Or sugar crisp can't get enough to the golden crisp. That's basically something. That's what Kamut is. It's in that family. Like the puffed wheat cereals. That's what Kamut's in that family. But they call it an ancient grain for a reason. And the reason why it's the health and wellness tip is because it's. You know, it's thousands of years old. They actually found kamuts in the tombs of the pharaohs. So, you know, it's almost a context clue that it is, you know, that it's, uh has regenerative, regenerative and restorative properties for our people. Because they found it, you know, in the um, tombs of the Pharaoh. That's how they incorporated co incorporated it into their diets, you know. And they lived to be hundreds of years ago, uh, hundred hundreds of years old. You know, they had very uh, smooth skin and good hair, and you know that was a staple of their diet in Egypt. Or Kemet. So that's where, you know, 
Kamut was grown in the northern part of Africa. And it was a uh, main, you know, it was a main uh, pantry item for people of that region. Um, so it's loaded with all kinds of health benefits. It's high in fiber. It's rich in nutrients. Has antioxidants. So anything, anytime they say antioxidant, it basically means fat burner. It burns fat. Um, a lot of people don't want to do the uh, plant-based um, lifestyle because they feel like if they're training, you know, especially if they're weight training, they feel they'll uh, lose, uh, you know, mass. That's how we're going to get your protein. Um, there's a whole lot of plant-based proteins out there. And Kamut is one of those. You know, it's very high in protein. It also has me metabolic properties. Uh, it regulates your um, insulin. Regulates your insulin levels so that it prevent your insulin from spiking. And, it, and studies have even shown in some cases, it's reverse type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Um, it's rich in fiber, so you will feel full for people that like to eat or people who like emotionally eat. They don't even know why they overeat, you know. Having a fiber dense foods will, you know, curb your appetite. So, Kamut is good for that. It's also like very dense. So you can make like a, um, you know, in four season states, we're approaching in fall, winter time. So it'll make a good, you know, add into a, a, a hearty fall stew. It's also good for cardiovascular health. Um, it lowers your blood pressure. It, it, it uh, regulates the flow of blood flow, so you'll be less likely to have any um, anything swollen. People that um, you know have gout, anemia. That'd be good for you. And it also lowers cholesterol. And then there's like hundreds of more health benefits. I just highlighted the most important ones. It's rich in so many um, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. It doesn't really, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer not to incorporate it into your diet. Um, very good for your gut health. Keep your regular, you know, keep those bowel movements going. And you're supposed to go every time you eat solid food. Like it's supposed to, you know, whatever you, you take in, you're supposed to leave your body. So we're not supposed to, like, go more than one day without a bowel movement. You're supposed to actually legitimately like every time you eat something you're supposed to get get up and get rid of it. It got to come out the front or it got to come out the back. One and two. But it needs to come out of you. You can't just stay up in you. And so, you know, Kamut is really good for that, you know, to keep you regular. So that's the health benefits of Kamut. And, yeah, make sure you incorporate that in your diet. And on to my next section, which is the current event section.
I refer to as my speaking point section. And the purpose of this section is just basically to reclaim my power or reclaim our power by talking about current events because the media have go out of their way to have us looking and sounding ignorant as possible. Um, so, you know, whatever's going on in the world, I talk about whether it's globally, nationally, or something within our community, I discuss and I break it down from our perspective. Um, so, yeah. That's what the speaking point is all about. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead go right on and dive into the speaking point of this evening. And unfortunately, I got to talk about somebody in our community. Somebody I really like. Somebody I really respect. Um, and it's a shame seeing this person like this. Now, like I said, you know, I don't use my platform to talk um, down on people uh, to, you know, to uh, ridicule anybody or, uh, you know, roast anybody, slander anybody's name. I'm all about upliftment and edifying our people. But, you know, the narrative podcast is also a platform of truth. And I got to tell the truth and stand on truth. And so, you know, having said that, you know, when people in our community are doing things on their platforms that make all of us look bad as a uh, community, I do have to call said individual out on their actions. And I really kind of hate calling them out. I, I hate that phrase because it sounds like I'm trying to scold them. But I got to talk about it not scolding them. I'm just making them aware of a problem by openly um, discussing it. It's like, you know, sometimes famous people, when they get, when they become entertainers, they they're not really aware that they don't have a support system until, you know, things like this happen. Because if they had a proper support system, they would pull them off to the side and be like, bruh or sis, you know, you need to chill. And, you know, that's not a good look saying this and saying that, you know, and doing this and doing that if they had a good support system. So, I don't know what's going on with my brother. Like I said, I like and respect his work, his body of work, what he's done in his career. Um, I like and respect um, when he was pro us, when he was using his platform to speak candidly on our issues and, um, you know, campaign for our issues. But as of late, you know, he said a whole lot of things I don't agree with, and I'm not going to break, run down every single teeny tiny thing that I don't agree with that is he's uh, said or taken a stance on. I'm just talking about the uh, most recent thing that is harmful to our entire community, and the brother's name is D.L. Hughley. Like again, like I said, I'm not scolding you, brother. You know, love and respect. I don't believe nobody has, you know, candidly pulled you to the side and, you know, made you aware of your actions and how it's affecting us as a whole. And so what is his actions? His actions is going on Vlad TV and airing out, you know, people whom he has issues with. And then I know you're saying like, well, dang, everybody from our community goes on Vlad TV and airs somebody out. Why is 
he, you know, why is he the biggest one you would, you know, use your platform to make him aware of his actions? I'm calling him out because he's supposed to be the voice of reason within our community. If you listen to his content, um, his notes from the GED section, his his own platform, his own uh, podcast and the things, the issues that he um, speaks on on his own platform about our issues, about what's going on in our community, you know, and advocating for our, our community like verbally. He knows what he's done is wrong if he still really believes in the things that he has said in the past as far as our community goes and articulately well might I add he's a very prolific speaker and very articulate and you know he speaks on our plight really eloquently and he just you know he articulates it the way I wish I could you know but I just gotta have to talk the way I can talk but uh, the brother's a dynamic speaker. I enjoy his brand of comedy. Um, I like his, you know, his very first season of Comic View. He was the first host of Comic View. Uh, at the time, he made my, uh, you know, transition to adolescence to uh, uh, my teen years watching him on Comic View, you know, he gave me the gift of laughter, like learning how to laugh at yourself. Because he used to like, he used to roast all his uh, people in the audience, like, hmm, if you were sitting in that first row when he was on the first season of Comic View, you was, he's about to tear you up. <laughs> So he just basically said all that to say he taught me how to, uh, you know, take a joke and laugh at, laugh at myself and not take life so serious at an early age. Take life as seriously as you need to take it. Like know, like know how to take a joke. And like I said, I respect his humor and I respect, you know, everything he said about our culture to this point. Um, brother, if ain't nobody told you, it's just, it's a bad look going on that dude's platform, um, airing out grievances that you have with your brother and your sister. So, like, I'm not telling you who to, who to like. If you don't like somebody, you don't like somebody, and that's just human nature. Like, Rodney King once asked a rhetorical question before he, uh, passed can we all just get along? And the answer to that is no, we can't. No, we can't. We're not all going to always see eye to eye on stuff. We're not going to agree on, agree on things. We're always going to have differences of opinion. We're always going to have different perspectives on things. We're always going to have conflicting, conflicting views. That's just life. That's all cultures. That's all civilizations. But one thing all cultures have that we don't, our community, and he knows this, is that they all stay on code. There's certain things they don't say in front of other people. But this brother has consistently gotten on Vlad TV to, you know, air out his grievances against fellow entertainers who he's not on one accord with. And the fellow entertainers that he doesn't seem to be on one accord with is uh, Monique and um, Shannon Sharp. So the controversy goes like he said he don't want to go on Shannon Sharp because Shannon Sharp, you know, his platform is messy. Um, he also had a back and forth with Shannon Sharp. I don't know his issues with Shannon Sharp. I don't know why. 
you know, I don't know why, I don't know. It's all entertainment to me from the outside looking in, but yeah, once referred to uh, Shannon Sharp as Wendy Williams with a weight set. So, I'm not getting where he's saying he's gossiping by asking questions. And the questions he's asked on Shay Shay, they're not leading questions. Um, you know, the viral Cat Williams, Cat Williams, he interviewed himself. He rarely, if you pay attention to it, he rarely even asked him. You got a cue card, eight by nine. He don't write the questions. His team puts the questions together and they're just like stuff the, um, they get off the internet people want to know. They go watch their old interviews and try to um, like come up with a fresh question for them. And they definitely got the option not to answer it as well. And then if you say, well, that's what Vlad does, I would say you haven't watched this platform. He asked like leading questions and in almost interrogation style. And many of his people that he's interviewed with from our community, they've caught cases, um, they've received some type of social media black backlash, or you know, they've been blacklisted in the industry, like after the um a Vlad TV interview. So, said all that to say to my brother, I beseech you, please stop going on this man's platform talking about your fellow entertainers. You're an entertainer as well. You have your own platform. If you got a grievance, air it out on your own platform. Air it out on your X, on your Instagram, on, on the GED section. You're a comedian. The next time you do a tour, tour you know put it in your material on your tour address it on you know on the stage now when Monique said what she said about you it was it was on the uh, uh, it was on the um, her comedy special it was in the confines of her art form and you yourself have said like there ain't no you know there's no such thing as going too far in comedy. You know, nobody should be above laughing at herself. She hasn't really said nothing super damaging in interviews. And then when she interviews, she don't go on nobody white Caucasians platform to talk about it, to discuss you or anybody else that she has an issue with. So I'm just imploring you, brother, like, I like your uh, work. I'm not trying to scold you. I'm just saying, like, you know, don't go on that um, devil's platform or none of these other culture vultures platforms to speak ill of your brother or sister. If you got a, if you got a big old something to get off your chest, like, set up a zoom conference call say it to their face uh, you're a comedian get on the stage and do a comedic set um, you got your own platform the GED section say it on there but don't keep on going up to that that culture vultures platform airing out your grievances with your brother and your sister like I don't know that's just that's really disappointing to see you there with you know all the good content that you have provided on your platform and all the you know ways you've spoken on our issues like don't don't do that brother don't go backwards with it you retrogressing you've been like you know the voice of reason I don't know, everybody's human, everybody makes mistakes, everybody goes through some. I don't think nobody's above making a mistake. 
you know I know the things uh, she said was you found damaging and hurtful to your family I don't know what the specific issue with Shannon Sharp is but you know whatever it is I believe you know if you, you guys are both grown men and in your 60s I believe like a conversation is like you know are we going to like get into the space where we civilly disagree agree to disagree or like what are we doing here if you don't like that brother that much But, you know, just my final, just like, like I said again, love and respect. This is not scolding. This is just basically, you know, standing on truth. Brother, you want stood for something. If you still stand for what you say you stand for, coming out of uh, Compton, California, you know, don't go on that man's platform no more or anybody else's platform outside of our culture speaking on our issues our in-house issues if you got a grievance with a brother or sister like you know you air it out on your own platform air it out you know on the uh, stage of a, a comedy stage there are so many other different ways you can do it but don't keep doing it that way that's all. So that was my speaking point for this evening. And my very last section is my uh, section, which I refer to as wise word of the day. I used to call, I had a whole lot of iterations of it. I started out calling it the final word of the day. Um, what else was I calling it? wise word of the day I think I've just sh um, shortened it to uh, wise word wise word of the day I called it something else final word of the day point being I, th I think I settled on wise word of the day because I was calling it like a whole lot of other names but you know is just basically how I'm closing out and um, it's just a gem a pearl of wisdom just something to um, have you ponder and um, reflect on life so having said that my wise word of the day is grace so grace means basically approaching anything with a form of dignity with a degree of decorum refinement so that like grace is just basically how you handle things so you can't handle I mean you can't control what happens outside of you you can't handle you know or control I'm saying handle you can't control what happens in life but you can definitely control how you respond to what happens in life and when you you you're carrying yourself with a with grace then you know whatever whatever crappy things happen into you in life you look good while you're going through it because you're you know you're handling and carrying and conducting yourself with grace you know and a, a form of grace is being able to handle constructive feedback handling you know just basically I think another uh, common thing we say is like 
when we're talking about grace is handling it with a grain of salt and resisting the urge to clap back you know stooping down to a lower level and I believe you know as a people if we all incorporated grace into our lives better we can deal with each other better because we got people in our circumference people we deal with on a daily basis we can't stand we got that one friend that we, we kind of we're not sure why we're friends with that person because <laughs> they rub you the wrong way so much I'm like dang are, are sometimes I make you question your friendship like why do I hang around this person um, we got people in our families, our blood relatives, we can't stand. We love them, but they look better going than they do coming. Definitely got co-workers for people to work the nine to five jobs. If you're an entrepreneur, you know, you done dealt with a scumbag to close the deal to get what you needed business-wise. And so glad after the after the deal was done, so you ain't gotta look at their face no more. But whatever your scenario, whatever your situation is, if you carry yourself with grace, you can overcome it because people are going to betray you. That's inevitable in life. Betrayal is inevitable. Somebody's going to double cross you. Somebody's going to talk bad about you to your face or behind your back. Something in life's not going to go the way you planned it to go, wanted, to, wanted it to go. But it's still going to happen whether you wanted to or not wanted to. You're not always going to get the answer that you would like. But you will get the answer and you have to accept it when you get it. So said all that to say, why get riled up when things don't go your way? Why get riled up and allow yourself to get sick, uh, upset when, you know, a situation or outcome happens in your life that you don't find too favorable or you're not satisfied with what is the sense of screaming on somebody barking on somebody and just ultimately making yourself more upset than you know the situation or the person just handle it with grace I know it's, not, it's easier said than done because some people are so ab abrasive some people are so rude, we just want to just do something physical to them. But if you exercise grace, you know, they'll know they can't get to you. And then, you know, you'll shift the atmosphere. Because when you're moving and carrying your, and conducting yourself with grace, in your day-to-day -day activities and goings on and how you present yourself to the world then you know the world will have to handle you accordingly they have to uh, you know handle you with dignity with decorum with class that's how they have to approach you no matter how rude they are no matter how obnoxious they are, when it comes to dealing with you, if you handle yourself with, uh, you know, grace and decorum, they will switch it up. Now, there's an exception to uh, the rules. Some people are like, kind of, you know, in our community we call it slick. They, they act slick. They talk slick. But, um, yeah. But basically, 
you know, be so nice in your approach. You can tell somebody to go straight to hell and they'll be looking forward to the trip. If you carry yourself with enough grace and dignity, well, that's it and that's all. Join me next weekend for another full episode of the Narrative Podcast. Um, keep your ear out for me all week long for weekday uploads of the Narrative Podcast. But this uh, episode is over. Take care, everyone. Uh, be safe. Have a, a nice festivity if you're celebrating Labor Day. Um, join me back for another episode of the Narrative Podcast next weekend and um, this week for weekday uploads of the Narrative Podcast. That's it and that's all, y'all. Thank you for uh, supporting me. Thank you for, uh, you know, engaging into my, engaging me, engaging my content. Uh, we'll do it again uh, this weekend and all this week. New episodes of the Narrative Podcast. Sending you love, light, healing, energy over everything you got going on in your life. Everything in your uh, circumference, everything you got before you. So, you know, we in it together as a unit. We're going to change this narrative. I'm Halsey Allen. I'm changing the narrative one episode at a time. I'm asking you to help me change the narrative by becoming a narrator. And while I'm changing the narrative on my end, one episode at a time, as a narrator, you can help me change the narrative on your end, one social media post at a time. Until next time, Harvey Allen, Narrative Podcast, signing off, and it's like that. is changing the narrative one episode at a time.